Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It's Friday the 17th, and I've known Stephanie quite a long time, and I'm at you right now. We're uh -oh. both, we're all wearing masks around here uh -huh. when uh -oh. we're not on the air. Even walking to the break room, we right. wear masks. You are one of the biggest Hello Kitty fans I've known for a very long time. And your face mask is even Hello Kitty. Yes. When did you get that? <laughs> um, actually, it was a couple of weeks ago. Really? My my friend from Austin, she, yeah. she sews, you know, just in general, but she has two little ones, uh, a toddler and a newborn. And she had messaged me, oh, I want to make you a mask. I was like, no, don't, you know, you're busy. Don't sure. worry. And then in the middle, I have a Hello Kitty mask. So you're thinking, ah, oh, it could be Spurs, could be something else. <laughs> but no, it's definitely Hello Kitty. Yes, I'm wearing it proudly. Thank you, it Andrea. Looks, it looks great <laughs> on you. Uh, KFC, we mentioned this in the early edition of DMSA. KFC is bringing back something. They're going to do the West Coast swing now. But they're testing uh, Beyond Fried Chicken in California for a limited time. It is called the, yeah, the Beyond Fried Chicken. Uh, going back to that name, I love it. It sounds very dramatic. Beyond Fried Chicken. Beginning July 20th, the fake meat brand will team up with uh, some for some deep fried mm -hmm. plant-based chicken. Vegetarians, flexitarians, and just curiousitarians will have to venture out to Cali since that's where the fake poultry tasting will be available. It'll be available in a six or 12 piece with a choice of dipping sauces. That's right. So here's a quote from Andrea, who is beyond, uh, excuse me, she is with a marketing officer with KFC. She says, I've said it before, despite many imitations, the flavor of Kentucky Fried Chicken is one that has never been replicated until Beyond Fried Chicken. Yeah, she said, we know the East Coast loved it. We thought we'd give those on the West Coast a chance to tell us what they think. 50 locations in LA, Orange County, San Diego will be testing it out, but they've actually tried this before Mm -hmm. um, yep, in 2019, they did it out there on the uh, in the in, southeast U.S. In Atlanta, yep. so they tried it out there as a one-day event only, and from that one-day event, it reportedly sold out within five hours. Five hours. They also tested this out in Nashville and over in Charlotte, North Carolina. So apparently, it's doing very well, and we have to assume that it tastes like the chicken. secret ingredient. Yeah. Ch ch chicken. <laughs> You would hope that fake chicken tastes like chicken, right? Well, well, right, but in this case, I guess it's their own their own recipe. But it must. It's got that that delicious uh, fried coating. It's yes, got a, it is a, the, how many diff different spices and herbs they say. It, uh, their secret recipe, I don't mm -hmm. know, but a lot of calories though. Either way, ah, who cares? Let's take a look at the rundown. is reporting 71,000 new cases of the virus in 24 hours, smashing the single day record for infections. Local researchers are now screening people for a COVID-19 vaccine trial. For this trial, researchers say you should not have had COVID-19 before. New accusations against Russian hackers allegedly hacking medical research in hopes of stealing information and becoming the first country to release a vaccine. The three suspects in the death of Ahmad Arbery are scheduled to appear before a judge in Georgia later today. Attorneys say all three men will be present for the arraignment hearing via webcam. They are expected to plead not guilty. The gruesome death of a soldier at North Carolina's Fort Bragg has his family demanding answers Specialist Enrique Roman Martinez's remains were found a week after he went on a fishing trip with fellow soldiers in May. The head of the U.S. Navy is heading to San Diego today where he'll inspect the USS Bonham Richard. The goal is to salvage the heavily damaged vessel. Mortgage giant Freddie Mac says the 30-year mortgage rate has fallen below 3% for the first time in 50 years, and many economists are predicting rates will stay that low into next year. T-Mobile is taking on robocalls. The company's latest endeavor is called Scam Shield. This product gives its customers comprehensive protection from scammers. Scam Shield will be free for T-Mobile, Metro by T-Mobile, and Sprint customers. NASA postponing the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope uh, because of the coronavirus and technical issues. The agency announced it's now targeting an October 31st, 2021 launch date. In honor of World Emoji Day today, Apple is previewing some new emojis. It includes a ninja, a boomerang, a pinata, and bubble tea. Uh, see, I was reading that story earlier. I didn't get to watch all of it. So the, the one is the Italian... Kind yes. of like, you know, I need the more pass. They have they have that signal for everything. That's, that's right. <laughs> I will call you an Uber. And there's already the spaghetti emojis. So Is there? Yes. Yeah, so Thank you goodness. can put everything together and make a whole sentence. Yeah.
Awesome. Well, they keep adding. <laughs> they also take away now and then too. Yes. They, you know, some of some of your fan favorites. But. Or or less politically correct. Oh perhaps. yeah, those two. Those two. Yep. Lots of moisture out there. Let's bring in uh, super meteorologist. Katie Blake. Good morning, guys. Good morning, everyone. Yes, we I'm really excited about today because uh, if our forecast high temperature verifies, this will be our first day out of the triple digits in like a week. So some good things coming your way in the forecast. Good news in the pollen count as well. Mold our only allergen today. It's low with a count of just 160. So today we are looking at a high temperature right around 98 this afternoon. So yeah, it's still going to be hot. Just a couple of degrees shy of the century mark. But we are getting out of that record breaking heat territory as we get into this weekend. A lucky few yards, especially down to the southeast, may even see a little bit of rain today. We'll talk about that and your full forecast coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you very much, Katie. We're looking at I-10 out there at the rim. That construction zone traffic is moving right now. We've got a stream problem there, 281 and winding way. And there's 1604 at Babcock. Top stories we're following for you today. We now know the name of a man who was hit by a car on Poteet Jordanton Freeway near Villaret Boulevard and Palo Alto. Police say 24 year old Alex Ramirez was crossing the street just after 1030 last night when it happened. The driver told police he tried to hit the brakes, but they didn't work. That's when he hit Ramirez, who was in the crosswalk. Officers tell us the driver did stop to help. Ramirez was taken to University Hospital in stable condition. He's expected to be OK. Right now, arson investigators are trying to figure out what sparked an overnight fire on the south side. Please tell us it happened in the 11,000 block of Apple White Road near South Sarzamora when firefighters arrived on scene around 1030. They found a shed on fire next to a trailer home. They were able to keep the fire contained to pretty much just the shed. Everyone in the home was able to get out safely. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center needs convalescent plasma and blood donations. Uh, I'm reading here there are currently no, none, no units of convalescent plasma on the shelf for COVID-19 patients. So far, almost 3,300 units of plasma have been donated from 250 donors. Nearly 8,000 people have recovered from COVID in our area from the donations. But blood donations are also highly encouraged. And if you're interested in donating blood or plasma, you have to do this online so you can make an appointment. You can go to SouthTexasBlood.org for more information. In your morning headlines, a video of a state trooper grabbing a suspect around the neck. And we'll show you what happens when waves crash the shore lined with houses. And that runaway kangaroo is caught and a tune from the piano man. Our David Sears is here. Morning. You you piano man or, or <laughs> Billy Joel piano man? Yeah. Oh, we get second. to find we out. Have to guess now. Give that away. Uh -huh. Friday. We don't give away stuff on Fridays. Okay. More video being released by a victim of alleged bru police brutality. This coming from Virginia. This time you're looking at a video of a traffic stop that happened last year. The suspect turned victim is shooting a video on his phone. He was pulled over for an expired inspection decal. The trooper gets right into the car. He yells at the driver, he even smiles for the camera. The trooper also claims to smell marijuana in the car. The suspect, Derek Thompson, was also driving with his suspended license. He refused to get out, so the trooper eventually unclamps his seatbelt and then used a headlock type hold to pull the man out of the car. Thompson's lawyer now wants charges brought against the state trooper, Charles Hewitt. You are looking at a coastline in Australia that is getting washed away. Waves crashing into the shore. Zooming in on that house right there. Look at this yard. Three levels of yard. Started out just to be one level of yard. They are losing backyards to the sea. Yards falling down the side of that cliff. Major cracks in some of the yards. And some of the houses started just hang there from the ground. You can catch a little dirt falling down the side of the hill. The director of environment and planning says at least four houses had to be evacuated. Some of the residents say the town hadn't done enough to help prevent more erosion. All right, let's take it to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Yes, those are police officers, and yes, they have a kangaroo surrounded. They finally got him captured. The kangaroo, whose name is Jack, I went way out on that one, didn't they? They escaped from the owner's backyard. The officers got a hold of him, and then they were able to get him into the back seat of the patrol car, and then they transported him to the pen. Actually, the pen for kangaroos, the department's horse barn. The guy who owns Jack says, hey, he's got friends who are permitted to house kangaroos. But zoning laws in Fort Lauderdale don't allow you to have a kangaroo. And finally this morning. Pretty good, huh? You might be surprised to find out 
who that is playing the piano on the street. Yes, the piano man himself, Billy Joel. He was out riding his motorcycle on a New York street when he came across that piano. Somebody just left outside on the sidewalk, so he decided to stop and play. He said the piano was a little out of tune, but otherwise was in good shape, and he wondered why somebody would actually want to get rid of a perfectly good piano. They at least donate it to some musical organization or a school or something, couldn't they? And wow. if it, you know, if it's good enough for him, it's going to be good enough for anybody else. Well, exactly. they were so flustered, they're like, oh, this is Billy Joel playing a yeah. rundown piano. I'm going to turn this sideways. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to go back. <laughs> That's awesome. They tried. But he was all decked out in his motor, his helmet and everything, but his, his publicist said, yes, that was him. And that was, was playing, the so, Billy Joel. We know that was him. Although I've heard you played a mean harmonica yourself, yeah. David Sears. Yeah. I don't know when you heard that, but yeah, it's not true. We'll go with that. Okay, thank you, Dan. Thanks, David. Thank you, David. Right, 908, 81 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Strong winds and severe weather had a father and daughter scared after a gas station overhang toppled while they were in their car. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, we have the details of how it happened. A father and his stepdaughter want to pay it forward to health care workers after both were diagnosed with cancer. What the Fine Dine Front Lines program benefits and how money they how much money they've raised so far is still ahead. Happy Friday. We're all we're calling all cool moms, fun aunts and uncles or really any caretaker that's looking for a an activity that's sure to keep the kids attention. Just ahead on GMSA at 9, we're live with Narwhal Sensory Box with all the details. And I am looking forward to that live shot. Now look at the stocks of Dow down 29 points. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Just about 9.13, a local business grabbing the attention of parents and little ones through a box full of surprises and play. Narwhal sensory boxes are filled with a variety of materials and textures to stimulate different senses, including touch, sight and smell through playtime. Alicia Beretta is live from Brackenridge Park with more on this local toy box. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, the mission behind Narwhal Sensory Box is to feel, learn and play and just take a look at the assortment that we have here for the kids. And this really can serve as a foundation for children's learning. And guess what? They'll ship straight to your doorstep here in San Antonio and surrounding areas. Live with me is Miss Sofia Garza. She's the owner and creator of Narwhal Sensory Box. Uh, and she tells me each one is themed, right, Sofia? So you have yeah. a different, we've, we've seen them here, so colorful. What can we expect? Yes, yeah, so every box is a different theme. All of them will have homemade Play-Doh, which is scented with essential oils, will contain some natural materials as well as figure toys or beads or anything that will stimulate the children's senses. So stimulating the senses, this brings some benefits. But before we show you that, well, we want to come back to this, one of my favorites over here, the space box. So yeah. she talked about the Play-Doh. Each box is going to have different um, objects, different little trinkets that the kids can decorate. But one thing for sure is that you're going to get Play-Doh. What is the benefit of having those essential oils infused in the, that homemade Play-Doh you make? Scented Play-Doh is very beneficial to for kids who are experiencing any kind of anger, anxiety, stress. These are like relaxing tools that will help the kids. And we talked about uh, sensory play and how there are benefits. So one of the ones that you tell me it helps with development of motor skills. What are some of the other benefits that this sensory play brings for the kids? Yeah, it supports language development, promotes creativity, exploration, imagination. It also helps to develop uh, brain connections and it's also great as i mentioned for anxiety and stress so parents if your kids are getting a lot of screen time and they're getting a little bored know that that does affect their creativity so this will allow for their imagination to just go wild stephanie i know you have rooney at home which one do you think she'd be interested we have construction <laughs> the pony box the scientist box Again, that space one, Play -Doh. cupcake, this is one, one of my favorites. <laughs> well, the they all come with Play-Doh. Yeah, I was going to say the Play-Doh, though, all, all across the board, definitely. We, we kind of have some of those things at home, and, you know, thank goodness, I mean, it, it, is, it does spark her cre creativity. So, yeah, definitely the Play-Doh, Alicia. And the coolest thing is that there's no age limit. This is perfect for kids ages three and up. But, Sophia, you even tell me some adults will ask for the Play-Doh. That's exactly. the popular item. Yes, it is. The Play-Doh is the favorite item of the box. 
Wonderful. Well, you guys, we have a link right now on ksat.com. Head over to the website so you can find out more about Narwhal Sensory Box. This is a local small business and you can support Sophia here. She was inspired by her two kids. So this, of course, just a really fun activity for the kids and for them to play independently. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Back to you. Thank you, Alicia. So important for the kids to spark their creativity, especially at this time. Yep. Thank you, Alicia. Funny story real quick. Sure. Because the Play-Doh just reminded me, it just happened this week. So speaking of sparking creativity, you think of like, oh, I'm going to make this or that. Uh, the funniest thing that she did, and, and I don't know where she got this from, she had one of her little, like a Barbie doll or princess, mm -hmm. and she used the Play-Doh, she, she took the Play-Doh and put it all over the Barbie's face, and she's like, oh, she's getting a face It's a spa I, day. I don't, yes, <laughs> that's what she said. I was like, I don't do that. I don't know where she got that from. Uh, careful, if you nap too soundly, you're uh, going to wind up with Play-Doh Play in your, I in your face. I think you're correct. That'll be a really weird mask, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I wonder But if probably be, exfoliates, who knows? Yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure some of yeah. it will be effective, right? Mm. <laughs> that's awesome, that's All funny. Right. Katie's joining us now. Katie, it's got to be a, a relief to come in and not have to be forecasting um, record high temperatures for the duration now. David Sears yesterday was like, please do not come in tomorrow and forecast another record high temperature. And we're not forecasting that today. Well, there you go. You delivered. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we are going to be trending this weekend away from the record breaking heat, which is good. So we'll get our high temperatures out of the triple digits. Now it's still going to be hot, but it's to be much more seasonable for this time of year. So if you want to spend some time outdoors this weekend, certainly be warm enough. 96 tomorrow, 97 on Sunday. Morning clouds and then afternoon sunshine. Tomorrow we could have a stray afternoon shower, but as we get into Sunday, I think the showers will be confined mainly to our coastal counties. Out there right now, still mostly cloudy. 81 degrees, dew point in the mid-70s. That's a high dew point. So we've got a heat index going at this hour. It's 81, but it feels like 86 when you factor in the humidity. Upper 70s in the hill country. 84 at this hour in Del Rio 83 down in Catula. So already plenty warm and muggy out there. That's for sure. We're starting to get our visible satellite picture in this morning and we still got plenty of low clouds in and around San Antonio and off to the west of 35. But as you look off closer to the Houston area, a lot more cloud cover there and also some rain showing up on radar. Looks like there are some heavier bands of rain uh, moving west closer to the Houston area this morning. This is a disturbance that's out in the Gulf of Mexico, and it's really easy to see when we zoom out here on our water vapor imagery. There's a counterclockwise swirl here uh, along the Texas and Louisiana Gulf Coast. That is a upper level disturbance that's going to swing over Texas this weekend, really today into tomorrow. As it does so, it'll provide a little bit of lift for some isolated showers and storms to develop primarily during the afternoon and evening hours. I think today is actually going to end up being our best shot here in San Antonio to see a little bit of rain. But overall, through the course of the weekend, better chances of rain down on the coast. Now, don't get too excited about this because while there will be some rain on radar at times over the next few days, it is not going to add up to much and it's not going to be all the rain that we need. So where you see all this uh, green color, especially the brighter green color there down to the south and to the east, that's maybe up to a half inch of rain. I think that's probably being a little bit generous here, but unfortunately coverage of rain over the next few days will be low and not as much as we need, but a lucky few yards could see a little bit of rain today. And as we get into the day tomorrow, so future cast is picking up on those showers and storms off closer to the Houston area this morning. As that disturbance gradually moves off to the west, I think we'll start to see some showers and storms drifting into our area as we get into the early afternoon hours. So dry for everyone through lunchtime. But as we get to two, three o'clock, some showers and non-severe storms possible off to the south and to the east. Think Hallettsville, Lavaca County, all the way down to Goliad. And through, let's say, five, six o'clock this evening, a few of those showers and storms could make a run at the I-35 corridor, and that would be our window here in San Antonio to see a little bit of rain. Now, it's not guaranteed that those showers will make it as far west as I-35, but it's not out of the question. However, you do have a better chance at a shower today if you're southeast of San Antonio and Bear County. We get into tomorrow morning, another cloudy start, maybe a few little sprinkles first thing in the morning as well. Then as we get into the afternoon, just a 10% chance of a stray shower tomorrow as that leftover energy kind of moves off to the west and away from us here in South Texas. So this is a change. We don't have triple digit heat in the forecast today, and we actually have a tiny little shot at rain. Not much, but it's a nice change, and we'll certainly take it where we can get it. 98 today, still in the mid to upper 90s through about 7 p.m. 
and then falling into the 80s later on tonight. So essentially, if you're down closer to the coast, you've got a chance for a shower each afternoon um, all the way through next week. It does look like slightly better chance at some stray showers kicking back in middle to back half of next week for us here in San Antonio, but no triple digit heat on the board. It's a win in my book, guys. Win -win. I agree. Yep. Thank you, Katie. 921, 81 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, a jewelry store in Michigan forced to close by the pandemic is going out with a bang. What the owner did in the statewide treasure hunt, that's after the break. A father and a stepdaughter in Seattle, Washington, found a way to say thank you even after going through the hardest times. Both were diagnosed with cancer and had to go through chemo. Ryan Dwyer and his 12-year-old daughter, Violet, are now both back home with good news. Violet is in remission and Ryan is getting ready for a bone marrow transplant. So they're now focusing on the team that cared for them. They want to pay it forward by starting Fine Dine Frontlines, using donations to get meals to local hospitals, feeding the doctors, nurses, and hospital staff, and helping restaurants too. We were looking for a way to give back to the people that actually had their hands on us physically every day. And we felt that a really good way to do that was through the gift of food. This is beautiful. And so far they have delivered more than 5,000 meals to 14 hospitals and they've raised $61,000. Listen to this. A jewelry store in Michigan was forced to close to the pandemic and its owners say they have buried roughly $1 million worth of jewelry in a statewide treasure hunt. Real engagement rings, precious coins, gold and silver, some of the items that are part of the treasure. The pieces buried everywhere from Detroit to the Upper Peninsula. Owner Johnny Perry says they had the time of their life burying everything. They say each treasure is valued at around $4,000 and is fitted with a GPS tracker so they know where everything is. Smart. And severe weather in St. Louis, Missouri caused some major damage around the city. This gas station overhang toppled by a strong burst of wind, scaring a driver and his daughter who were inside their car. When it happened, the overhang missed hitting the gas pumps. Crews are now busy working to repair the damage from that storm. Much more ahead on GMSA at 9 on your Friday. A Virginia Beach waitress will never forget this act of kindness what the customer said about the generous tip and why he felt he needed to help. A yellow lab, homeward bound, but ended up the, the wrong home. What led a four-year-old named Cleo to walk nearly 60 miles to end up on a stranger's front porch. Delivering meals and spreading happiness to her students. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. Coming up later on GMSA at 9, I'll introduce you to a teacher of the year and how she is going above and beyond. And as we head to break, a quick look at the roads. I was like, there's a car like that seems stopped there. Uh, but looking at 37 and Cesar Chavez looking all right, 151, Loop 410 looking okay. Things seem to be running smoothly. If we have any problems, we will get back to you. Friday morning, 930, when the pandemic hit, teachers across the country were thrown into seemingly impossible circumstances. And while parents had to quickly learn how to teach their kids from home, they found out firsthand it is far from easy. So true. And as Max Massey shows us, thanks to a candid conversation between him and a director here at KSET, he learned of a local teacher willing to exceed expectations to make sure her students were okay. That was really satisfying knowing that my child has a teacher like that. Robert Flowers is a director here at KSET, and one day he told me about Miss Carmen Alvarado a science teacher at his son's school, Terrell Wells Middle School. Ms. Alvarado is Teacher of the Year not only because of what she does here in the classroom or online, but because of how she goes above and beyond for her students. They had a Zoom meeting of some sort. On Fridays, I had like a FaceTime Fridays where instead of just focusing on, on um, content, it was more a social time. Like most teachers around the country, Ms. Alvarado had to adapt when the pandemic hit working with her students to normalize virtual learning as much as possible. I take my lunch while talking to them and one of them was like, hey. He just mentioned that he was hungry. That interaction stunned Ms. Alvarado and it made her take action. I got up, went to the store, bought the same things my kids like at home and came to drop it off at the house. My neighbor alerted me that someone was at the front door. I walk around from my backyard to the front door. I see this lady with these bags. I'm thinking this lady have the wrong, the wrong address. Out comes my son. Flowers had no idea what was happening. 
He says, oh, Miss Alvarado. So he walks over there, talks to her. He gets these bags, brings the bags to me. I look at it, it's food in the bag. Robert didn't know how to react. My emotions were everywhere. Well, we have food in the pantry. We have food in the refrigerator, the freezer. He knows other students need food more than he and his family does. I tried to get my son to give the food back. Please, please stay. The parent didn't want it. She says I have to go somewhere else. I couldn't go myself to bed and knowing that someone told me they were hungry. Which tells me she was probably taking food to another student's home. It was amazing to see how far a teacher would go to help out. You go one extra mile, or in this case, 18 extra miles, to make a kid feel happy. And here's a message for Miss Alvarado. I appreciate you. And I'm pretty sure there's many other parents that will appreciate you for what you've done. You're amazing. Max Massey. Keep up the good work. KSAT 12 News. Yes, we appreciate you, Miss Alvarado. It's very cool, and a shout out to all the teachers out there who've been hanging in there during. Well, the and months. and I thank Robert for sharing the story too. Yes, Robert. He's here in the studio too. <laughs> he said, "We're mm -hmm. talking about him." He said, yeah. mm -hmm. "He's a big old softy, by the way." <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Hey, Katie. Hi. <laughs> I love that. Feel Feel Good Friday. We've got mm -hmm. a good story. Got a good pollen count just mold today and it's low and some good looking weather heading into the weekend. We could use a little bit more rain, but we've got at least a shot at a shower and we're bringing those temperatures down out of the triple digits just mid to upper 90s this weekend. So definitely not sweater weather, but uh, we're getting out of that record high territory. 84 now at the airport, 77 Bernie stage, 75 lost maples up in the hill country. And we do have some low clouds hanging around with us this morning. We'll see a good mix of sun and clouds as we get into the afternoon hours. And again, a low shot of a shower, mainly on the coastal bend today. And we'll talk more about those rain chances coming up, but check out your afternoon temperatures heading into next week. No triple digits on the board, and that is a good thing. Thing. We'll take another in-depth look at your full forecast, and we're also going to check on the Saharan dust. That may be around in some low levels this weekend as well, so more on that coming up in just a bit. Guys. Thank you, Katie. I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. No problems to report out there on the far northwest side. There's a little bit further down the interstate. I-10 at Dominion. We've got a big article here we wanted to kind of boil down from USA Today. And the headline is that small cars are being discontinued. Why General Motors, Ford, and even Toyota I have given up on many models of subcompact cars. Yeah, it says after years of declining sales of passenger cars, several automaker automakers have recently decided to give up on the subcompact body style as SUVs increasingly win over Americans. Yeah, General Motors uh, last week became the latest to discontinue a model saying it's going to stop making the Chevy Sonic in October. And Sonic went from a fuel efficient youthful symbol of GM and GM's comeback in the aftermath of their 09 government funded bankruptcy to mostly forgotten in an era of surging SUV sales. Put simply, according to this article, most Americans are no longer willing to squeeze into small cars despite their affordability and fuel efficiency. Well, and match that with gas prices are low, SUVs providing the allure of a higher stance and more cargo space, subcompact sales fell, get this, 50% in the first half of this year compared to the same time just a year ago. Uh, many buyers of the cars have upgraded, though, to relatively new subcompact SUVs, such as the Honda HRV, the Jeep Renegade, and Hyundai Kona. Mm -hmm. That's right. And not everyone's ditching small cars. We don't want you to get the wrong impression here. Nissan recently redesigned the Sentra, and the company's COO says the company still believes the subcompact segment will do pretty well. But here's the trade-off now. Mm -hmm. As they start to get rid of some of these uh, subcompact models, that's going to mean fewer newer cars in the market with starting prices of less than $20,000, perhaps placing new cars out of reach for many Americans. That's true. For example, the Sonic's starting price is 16720 while its sibling ride, the Chevy Trax subcompact SUV, has a starting price of 21400 So what this means is they think that's actually going to drive people into the used car market because transaction prices for new vehicles continues to rise, even amid the pandemic. I guess I'm one of those people. I used to, to go used. Well, uh, so went from I went from a little car to bigger to bigger. Yes, but I have a you know I have a little one. <laughs> well, the temptation's real, especially here in, in truck country too. Ah, you know, you know, that's true. And with gas prices low, we hope they stay that low, right? Yes, that's a positive here. <laughs> Let's say uh, now for some good news on your Friday morning. Cleo was homeward bound, but the yellow lab got the wrong home. 
So as KMBC's Alan Shope reports, she ended up nearly 60 miles away at the house her family used to live at. She got out of her car and said, where'd that dog come from? Four-year-old yellow lab Cleo feels right at home on the front porch. Uh, she wouldn't let us quite come near. Only thing, it's not her front porch anymore and hasn't been for nearly two years. In November 2018, we moved in. Colton had Cleo microchip checked and to his surprise. Brittany said, well, that's the people that used to live here. Turns out the owners had posted a Facebook page a week earlier about the missing dog. They couldn't believe it when Colton called and said Cleo walked home. It's the most bizarre story. Really, it's she's everything to us and my mother. It's 57 miles door to door from Olathe to Lawson, and neither family knows exactly how Cleo made the trip. That's a that's a hike. I mean, for anybody. Colton says they weren't surprised that Cleo was scared. Finds her way home, and there's a bunch of there's some strangers living in it. That'd be scary for anybody. It just feels really good to feel reunited with her. Now that we know who she belongs to, she pops up again. We know who to call. <laughs> Both say they may never know anything about her journey. It's a mystery. Something we'll probably never know. That was KNBC's Alan Shope reporting. A man from Ohio decided he wanted to do something nice for a stranger, so he asked his family and friends to help him raise money. And that's when Dan Pugh was scrolling through social media when he came across the Venmo challenge. So Pugh says you ask anyone to donate through Venmo and that Venmo challenge, and then you donate the money to a food service worker as a tip. He's able to rack up $650 in just a few days, donated it to a waitress at a small restaurant in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Pew says he just wanted to spread some love and positivity. Oh, that's cool. 938, 84 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. A new Netflix movie about an affair that takes a deadly turn. We have a look at Fatal Affair next on GMSA at 9. Let's go back to lower Manhattan and check the Dow. It's now down about 65 points at 26,670. A new movie debuting on Netflix looks at what happens when an extramarital encounter takes a deadly turn. CNN's Rick Damagella has a preview of Fatal Affair. How dare you show up at my house? You don't return my calls. You don't return my text. How else am I supposed to reach you? You're not supposed to. Nia Long and Omar Epps star in the Netflix thriller Fatal Affair. My husband is outside. Do you not see what I'm willing to do for you? I'm very sensitive to women in these types of films not being smart. I think you can make a thriller. I think your female lead can be smart. You just have to be smarter with the story. But don't make your actor look not smart and savvy to service the story. And I don't ever want to see you around me, my daughter, my husband, or my home ever again. So Omar and I actually worked on the script and we're both very sensitive to making sure that every single thing made sense. Omar Epps plays an atypical affair partner. It was really super fun and, and um, to, to play a character who's unpredictable um, was refreshing. I am married. No one has to know about us. Us? There is no us. The key is you don't want to see it coming. You know, we know these are the type of films where the audience kind of knows the framework, but the fun is in not knowing how it's going to unfold. I got to tell you, if things had worked out differently, you would never feel like you're sleeping with a stranger. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. What's it called? Fatal Affair on Netflix? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Omar Epps and Neil Long. Very interesting. Katie's back now, and we always love to end the work week with another junior meteorologist. Yes, Elijah is going to take us into the weekend with his forecast. Elijah, take it away. Hi, my name is Elijah Garcia, and my and I'm going to be your junior meteorologist today. And today's Thursday, part hot, hot, partly cloudy skies with the chance of thunderstorms. Have a nice day. <laughs> Have Thank a nice you, day. Elijah. Elijah, if you turn around, Adam Gasky is I right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> That was He's awesome. giving him advice. Yes. Yeah, right? Yeah, give Adam, give Adam a few few pointers. Yeah. I love his hat, too. 
I know. Very Stylish. fashionable. Yes. Stylish and accurate. Thank you, Elijah, taking us into the weekend on that good note. A little bit of good news in the forecast as well. Now, I wish we had better rain chances, but at least we're getting our temperatures down just a bit because it has been a very hot month so far. Here we are about halfway through the month of July, and our average high temperature so far has been about 101 degrees. We've had 10 days with a high temperature at or above 100, and at least every day the high has been 97 degrees or above. So, yes, very hot. And actually, last Friday, all the way through yesterday, our high temperature was above 100 several days, especially this past week with record high temperatures here. So we're going to start to get these numbers out of the triple digits. I'm hopeful that our triple digit heat streak will come to an end today with a high temperature forecast of 98 there. And even through next week, still hot, but much more seasonable for this time of year as compared to 104, 105, even 107 earlier in the week. We're going to get away from those types of numbers. Big reason for that, the heat high has started to move to the north over the past couple of days, and so that's going to keep the most intense heat to the north of us as we get into the weekend. Even toward the end of the weekend and early next week, the heat high itself actually continues to weaken even more and kind of breaks into there, and that's just going to keep it from being too crazy hot for us here in South Texas. Even through the end of next week, the center of the heat high stays off to the north. That's important because it affects our temperatures. It'll keep us out of the triple digits, but it's also important because it will allow for some weak rain making disturbances to move down along the southern edge of this heat high. And while that won't give us really any widespread chances of rain, at least gives us something, some isolated showers and storms possible. And that's kind of the pattern that we'll find ourselves in uh, through the start of next weekend. We do have some rain off near the Houston area, some storms moving west toward uh, Houston this morning and some rain out in the Gulf of Mexico there. This is actually due to an upper level disturbance that's sitting just off to our east that will continue to move off to the east closer uh, to the west, excuse me, closer to us uh, later on today. And that gives us just a low end chance of a shower or storm, about a 20% chance through the middle of the afternoon. And then in the evening hours, once we get past sunset, those rain chances will start to drop off. Once again, rainfall coverage is going to be low tomorrow, even into uh, today and even into the day tomorrow, but at least it's something that little disturbance passing on by will give at least a few lucky yards, a little bit of rain. So 20% chance today, 10% as we get into Saturday. And then by Sunday, that disturbance will have kind of washed out and we'll be left with just some coastal showers and storms uh, Sunday afternoon. You may also notice a Look, a hazy look to things today. I almost kind of noticed that as I was looking off to toward the horizon yesterday. We do still have some lingering Saharan dust even in the air today, so things could look a bit hazy today. Push the wrong button. This two clicker thing. Sometimes it just gets me. I've not gotten the hang of it. Not gotten the hang of it just yet. So we do have a little bit of dust lingering there. It can continue to be a bit noticeable. Things may look just a touch hazy today and even into the day tomorrow. But as we get into Sunday, that dust will really thin out a bit more. So maybe a hazy look to things for your Friday and your Saturday, but uh, certainly won't be as dense as it, ha as it has been uh, so far this year. So 20% chance of an afternoon shower or storm today. A little bit lower coverage as we get into Saturday and then a uh, little bit of a break, but some coastal showers possible Sunday into Monday. Next week, those stray showers return to the forecast. At least we don't have any triple digits in there. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 951. With the coronavirus worsening in states across the country, parents are having to decide whether or not to send their kids to school. Plus, even though we're in the middle of a summer heat wave, pools around the city are closed to the public. Here's today's 9 at 9. More than 5,000 additional cases in Bear County bring the confirmed total of cases to more than 27,000. Hospitalizations are down. Right now, 1,202 people are in the hospital, 430 are in the ICU, and 277 on ventilators. Before we opened up, uh, we had eight people in the hospital. Now we have 800. Uh, we had uh, four ICU patients, now we have 211. In San Antonio, refrigerated trailers being used as temporary morgues. That's because hospitals there are overwhelmed with COVID-19 victims. The heated debate over wearing masks continues to grow across the country. Just this week, the head of the CDC said if we all wear masks, we could have this under control in a matter of weeks. There's only one thing that can slow the spread, and that is by people adopting the use of wearing a face guard of some sort. Again, understand uh, the passion and understand people want answers, but we have to do it in a, a way that respects this process and in a thorough uh, manner. 
Both Northside ISD and Northeast ISD announcing they will delay in-person class for the upcoming school year. School officials say there will be no in-person classes until at least after Labor Day. Both districts are offering meal distributions and assistance with devices or internet. The uh, Metropolitan Transit and Mayor Ron Nirenberg have agreed on a plan to use a one eighth cent sales tax for economic recovery and then permanently shifting it to transportation funding. Both sides hope to get it on the November 3rd ballot. The Democratic National Convention has officially moved online. The event was slated to take place the week of August 17th in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The DNC said the convention, including the voting period, will instead take place remotely. San Antonio City officials say area pools and splash pads will remain closed through the rest of the summer. A statement city says keeping the pools and splash pads closed just emphasizes how important it is right now to avoid larger gatherings and practice social distancing when outside your home. Facebook is now adding labels to post about voting from federal officials and candidates. The label directs users to an official government website with voting information. It will appear on posts regardless of whether they contain false statements. Last look at Transguide with Time Saver Traffic, I-10 at Hewerman. No problems to report. Slow traffic there in that construction zone out there near Leon Springs. And there's I-10 near the Rim Shopping Center. Katie? We had some clouds around this morning, but it looks like we're starting to see more and more sun there on our Transguide camps. And we'll see a mix of sun and clouds this afternoon. High of 98, getting us out of the triple digits here. 20 to 10% chance of a shower or storm this afternoon as that disturbance swings over to the west and uh, overhead. And I need to jump to the seven day forecast. Here you go. I want to make sure you get a last look at this. High temperature staying in the mid to upper 90s through next week. Coastal showers possible each day. As far as any good, meaningful rain, that's not in the forecast just yet, but we'll keep you updated. Thank you, Katie. Jurassic Park junkies rejoice. That's right. So nearly 80 life-size animatronic dinosaurs are going up for auction. Mm -hmm. there they yep. are. Up in Canada, uh, the CEO uh, of a Canada's Able Auction says, we have a whole pile of authentic and original fossils and all the equipment related to putting on a show like this with these fancy uh, animatronic dinosaurs. So this includes uh, Tyrannosaurus rex, 72-foot uh, brontosaurus, and velociraptors, along with hundreds of fossils and animatronic equipment. Now, Able Auctions isn't saying where they got all these prehistoric-looking props. However, the Vancouver Sun indicates they could be leftovers from Dino King Tech Inc., an animatronics firm that leased its attractions to museums and zoos in over 100 cities worldwide. They filed for bankruptcy back in May. So Dodd says that the Robo Dinos are currently sitting in shipping containers at the auctioneer's Langley, British Columbia based warehouse and will be unloaded over the next two weeks. Yep, they're going to uh, they're broken down, but they're going to be putting them back together. Bids on the models will kick off Thursday, uh, August 6th at 930 a.m. And the gargantuan garage sale will be conducted entirely online due to coronavirus concerns. How fun. We need one here. If you're thinking <laughs> about doing it, check with your homeowners association first. Definitely. This isn't going to fit in the garage. That is true. Have a great weekend, guys.